the cancer battles of high-profile figures such as the late country music legend Toby Keith. They are boosting online searches, especially about screenings. Prostate cancer searches are online, uh, are up online, I should say, as well, more than a thousand percent. That's according to a British cosmetic group. As people in the UK are worried about their king's prostate cancer, uh, all that news coming down for King Charles. Let's talk more about this now with Dr. Thomas Marin, director of the Early Phase Trial Unit at the Tisch Cancer Institute in New York City. Doctor, welcome to the show. I wanted to start off with all of that news this week. I mean, King Charles, Toby Keith's passing, uh, following his battle with stomach cancer. When we have these high profile cases, do you yourself see a spike in everyday patients coming in for their own checks? Uh, well, I'm an oncologist, so usually I'm seeing them once they're already diagnosed, but we are seeing a lot of more people reaching out with interest about screening. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the main issues, which is highlighted by both these cases, is that, you know, most of the time we're identifying cancer once it's already very advanced, often when it's already causing symptoms. And it, there's fortunate cases like King Charles's case, where I don't know the details, obviously, but it sounds that way, where it was incidentally found. But ideally, we would really focus on screening so that we could identify these cases a lot earlier, because the earlier that we identify cancers, the easier they are to cure. Yeah, and I wanted to talk about screenings with you, some options out there. Uh, Dr. Marin, there have been high hopes for all these blood tests, you know, that are being developed to detect nearly 20 different kinds of cancer in, in some of these uh, tests. Is that something you'd suggest to people? And does the substance there match the hype at this point? I think we're headed in that direction, and I hope that in the next five to ten years we can really rely on blood tests because I think everybody would like to put mammograms and colonoscopies up on the shelf because they're yes. not pleasant. Um, but the reality is that they are the most sensitive. They're the ones that the, ask the, the assessments that can really detect these cancers very early. And the blood test isn't quite there yet. So most of the blood tests that are out there, including the gallery test, which is now available, are much better at detecting more advanced cancers. But we really want to detect stage one and stage two cancers because those are the ones that we can cure most easily. So I think that the way in which uh, we're seeing gallery used now and it's being explored and we're getting a lot more data in the UK and also here in certain health systems in the United States is as an adjunct. So when you're going for your colonoscopy, when you're going for your pap smear or your mammogram, you know, adding on that blood test may give us some additional information and, and help identify certain cancers earlier. And I also wanted to talk to you just about the costs of screenings right now, you know, because at this point, everybody knows they should come forward and get checked, right? I mean, we, we've heard it time and time again, but it can be so costly even for those with insurance. I mean, I just had a, an annual skin check a few weeks ago. I came out of pocket at an in-network clinic, hundreds of dollars for it, which I wasn't anticipating. You know, a lot of people who, you know, they feel fine, they look fine, but they can't afford to come forward out of curiosity. What do you tell those people? So there are a lot of programs that uh, can help support these screenings because the reality is if you catch these cancers early, the subsequent costs of treating those cancers are much less, um, both to the insurance industry, but also most importantly for our own pocket. So it's really important to identify those cancers earlier, whether they be skin cancers or colon cancer or breast cancer, uh, because the subsequent consequences as far as treatment you know, are, are much easier if you catch a stage one cancer versus metastatic disease. Yeah, the price is just uh, astronomical. And, you know, you bring up colon cancer. I wanted to ask you, too, just this week we talked with a doctor about studies pointing to alcohol consumption, obesity as factors in rising cases of colorectal cancer. Uh, but with cancer, in your opinion, how much of it is diet and lifestyle versus environmental factors and any last advice for what we should be doing every day to keep ourselves healthy? I mean, I, I think you just said it right there is what we really need to do is focus on healthier diets, lower fat, fewer processed foods, uh, uh, less red meat and more exercise because obesity and, and sedentary lifestyle is really associated with these rising incidences of cancer. Uh, we are seeing more and more early colon cancer. It's, it's very alarming how many 30 and 40 year olds that I'm seeing that are referred to my trials program uh, with advanced colon cancer. And so it really underscores the fact that, you know, when you are not feeling well, don't just sort of ignore it and, and, you know, delay a primary care doctor visit for three, six, nine months. Mm -hmm. We really need to reach out and see our primary docs with any sort of health concern. Yeah, and listen to our own bodies. We know ourselves the very best. Dr. Thomas Marin, thank you so much for hopping on this morning. Thanks for watching, everybody. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. Also, don't forget to click that red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.